Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Conversations in Pop Culture. This is my second interview of the day, and I have the living legend, Lou Fisto, here, who I've been wanting to do for two-plus years at this point. So how are you? I'm, I'm good, thank you. It's, it's been a rough week, uh, but uh, overall, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's been a very bizarre wrestling week from the very top of this week. Mm -hmm. to the back end and we're going to talk a little bit about the back end in a little bit but you are kind of the lightning rod and the centerpiece and what caught fire with this entire czw issue mm -hmm. and some people know what it's about people have been following on twitter have an idea of what's going on but you made a video about it and that's kind of how this all started so mm -hmm. what exactly happened for starters before, um, so everybody gets caught up on where we're at. Yeah, the story is a lot, like, it, it, it's longer than what I actually explain on my video, because I couldn't tell everything. Uh, what happened is, uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, a fan complained online that Mercedes Martinez versus Lefisto should, should not be advertised as a cat fight. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And then he sent me the link, and that's where I saw... Uh, sweaty girls in dirty fights, revealing all in matches. Uh, Mercedes Martinez versus Lopisto. There was Leva Bates, uh, Anaya. I can't remember who else was on that specific pay per view, but the whole thing has been rebranded not as uh, WSU, but CCW Girls with a Z. <laughs> And I found another one where it was something about all assets revealed or something like that. And uh, with images of us, uh, it was actually captures from us bending, like bending over. And then when you take a German suplex, like big shot on her crotch and all that stuff. And I only tweeted like, what's up with that CCW? And they reached out to me saying, uh, we respect everything you did in the past. Uh, I'm sorry, we sold the footage to our third party. That's how they want to present you girls. We can't do nothing about it. We tried, but oh well. And I went back and forth with them saying, it's your brand, it's your name. How can you do this? You know that we, don't, we did not sign up for this. And when I saw that they just didn't care, I kind of gave up and stopped talking to them. And it took... Fast forward to last week, which is, a, like I said, about a month and a half after, I was really hoping that they would change their minds, that they would, again, like, go back to WSU and wrestling with the original titles, like, Power, Battle Tested, Breaking Barriers. Because here's the main thing that people don't know. Um, w, uh, when WSW, WSW was bought by CCW, uh, what we were told when they were be calling us to get booked and everything their main goal was to make wsu like the shimmer of the east coast they wanted it to be a serious women's wrestling promotion they wanted to have like great matches and make it like a, a home for all the female wrestlers to be the best they could be so <laughs> with with this happening i was like this is really not what i signed up for not only you are rebranding all of us like if we were like softcore, like the title sound like if you go to your triple X video on the corner. Top streets, and heavy like is a good example. Like Top and heavy is a good example of that. That yeah. you know, you know, as a guy, and I'll openly say it, you know, that definitely does not sound like like a hardcore porn title, for for lack mm -hmm. of a better word. And in full honesty, whatever consequences come my way, uh, I'll take it, and I'm just gonna say it that way. But mm -hmm. it definitely sounds suggestive to, to be fetishy. generous, to be generous. Yeah. And it's definitely more softcore porn. -ish. Yeah, that's, that's why I said softcore porn. Of course, it's not like as subjective as those triple X videos you would see, but the more softcore porn, that's what it sounds like. And uh, there was actually a fan that was buying this video who sent me a message. He's like, well, I thought I was buying something like fetishy and then I found you guys because you were like, and it was professional wrestling because not only are they kind of uh, presenting us in a way that we're like not, but they're like 
kind of selling something that it's not to people who think they're actually buying like sweaty girls and cat fights and I don't know, wearing all kinds of, I don't know what they're expecting, but um, that's what, what I'm trying to explain is that uh, we are, we said yes to uh, giving them our image or name and everything to produce professional wrestling shows and nothing else. And don't get me wrong, like when it's it's the way independent wrestling works, uh, when you say yes and you show up to a wrestling show, uh, we know that the footage is going to be sold. We know, but we, we expect like high spot, independent wrestling. Uh, IWTV. Net- DVDs, fight, you know, uh, all, all those things. And we're cool with that. We know we're not going to get any revenue from this. But when they change the way... Um, the description of the matches, what they are, they pretend to be something else that they actually are. Then that's where there is a problem because it's like going back years behind with the Attitude Era when people barely knew how to work. There was a few women, of course, that were really good, but that were also involved in gravy matches and um, um, what, was, what would they call like uh, evening gown matches? Where they you were had the incident people. with the cat. Where she took off her top. At exactly, the exactly. You know, you had the entire China thing with the mm-hmm. split skit, which which was whatever. It ma- it made sense for DX to some degree, but yeah. that's not what we're talking about. Is all those bra and panty matches mm-hmm. and how it took WWE almost ten years to fix that, and this is almost going back to two thousand four era or even nineteen ninety eight era. You can make the argument. Exactly. And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with cat fights. Like, uh, I would remember, like, Beulah or Francine. They would cat fight in the ring. It was so entertaining. But there was two managers colliding. And they would add a little something to a match that was totally violent. And then this would get in. And they would change the pace and make it interesting. There's nothing wrong with that. There's actually nothing wrong with the adult industry. Um I've actually worked, I have two degrees in multimedia and graphic design, and I've actually worked for a porn company working on the pictures and whatever. So I have absolutely nothing against these people. Yeah. And it's a very hard business to be in. But if it is softcore porn, if it is the adult industry, then you uh, promote it as such, and it's fine. That's, you know, people get what they're expecting. But if you're promoting a serious professional wrestling, uh, promotion with women's wrestling and you keep telling your girls this is serious we're going to make sure you guys are taking seriously and equals and then you do that after you're like no that's, that's where there's like a difference or when people mix up uh, but this girl's doing sexy pictures or she has like a uh, only fans I'm like yeah that's her business she decides to do this and market herself as that it's fine Whatever she wants to do on her private time, she's an adult, whatever. This has nothing to do with us and WSU or CCW. Um, As an adult, you can do whatever, but when you show up somewhere and you expect something and you're promised something and you are being told that this is serious and you'll be showcased as an athlete and then suddenly they change their mind, you're like, Okay, no, no, no. This is this is not what I expected. This is not what I signed up for. Because if I knew they would like brand is like this, I would not wrestle there. Period. So to go off of that, so clearly that kind of catches us up. And now they're doing this. This is relatively new. I don't know how new this is exactly, but you discovered it about a month and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And then what? And then you were getting nowhere with them, in which that they had no response to you, CCW, which owns WSU. And just, just so everybody knows, you know, this isn't from the CCW brand shows. This is, most of this stuff is from WSU, which is the same company. Mm-hmm. I want everybody yeah. to be on the same page. And so now, fast forward, when did this video drop? Saturday or Sunday of last uh, week? It was, it was, I think, Friday... Friday morning that I put it online because cool. after a few months, uh, like a, a month and a half or so of hearing nothing from them. And that like CCW has been my home. This is where I grew as an intergender uh, wrestler. They gave me a lot of 
uh, exposure and when John Zanding had it. Uh, when I got there, I was just a girl. They didn't, I mean, he didn't really care. I don't think so. But when he saw that I was working so hard and I really wanted to succeed, I went from the girl to being his kid. And he would call me kid. And he was always super respectful, pushing my limits. You can do it very, very supportive. And so CZW always had like a special place in my heart because of that. And so when this happens, like even when I I was like thinking about the video, it took me like, yeah, like I said, it took me that month to say like, am I doing it? Am I doing it? I, I'm going to wait and see what they're doing. If they, you know, after I kind of call them out online, if they're going to change their mind and go back to what it, it is actually supposed to be. And when I saw that, no, they were on top heavy and you know all assets revealed and their asses were everywhere i'm like i i gotta say something like it's it bothered me it was wrong and then i felt like it was the right thing to do to uh, kind of call them out as as professionally as i could but in a way uh i felt like the girls were kind of betrayed so it was really hard for me here and there in the video to actually stay completely professional because I feel like we went from, oh, you're important to us to, no, you're tits and ass and we're going to use it and make money. So it's like, uh, so it's it really felt, feels like a betrayal from a company that um, not only me, but a few of the girls, we've been literally like shedding blood for this company. I mean, it's a new management. It's not the same as John's ending when I was there, but if we're only taking uh, WS, WSU, uh, a lot of girls feel really betrayed for trusting them. It, it's one thing that fans go online and we get bullied or they go on YouTube and they, they do those hot compilations where they zoom in on their butts or whatever. It's really hard to control. It's the fans, like, you try to report, but YouTube is not doing anything or Twitter is not doing anything. But when it comes from a promotion that you trust in, that's where like the heartbreak is. You feel totally betrayed and you're like, no, I mean, that's not what you told me. Why are you doing this? And you, you try to understand, but really can't. And the only thing they did is that statement that says, oh, uh, sorry, not sorry, basically. So that's why, that's when everybody like went nuts. The wrestlers, the female wrestlers, um, staff, a former booker says, I can't believe I've worked that hard to, for this wrestling company and they're doing this. It's like all my work is in vain. So I do want to make it clear. And I think you made it partially clear that this is under new management and this management technically isn't all that new from my understanding. They've been managing for about five years now mm -hmm. though. So, and I mean, I'm going to say who it is cause I really don't care. And I think it's that out there, so it doesn't matter. It, it, it's DJ Hyde for, for those who don't know. Um, and that's all I'm going to say on the issue because I don't know what's going to come out of this myself on my end. And I don't know how Twitter, when this thing goes up on Twitter, how it's going to be acted upon from, from, from both sides. I, I really don't. And so I'm a little bit nervous. But what has that been like? Because now the video is up there. A few wrestling websites picked it up. A few big ones picked it up rather and quickly. All over the world. Like I did podcasts in Australia. I did one with UK this morning. I did one with Canada uh, two days ago. It's it's literally everywhere because the wrestling community as a whole, besides, you know, those few five or ten people who are like women's are slut and women this and they're like really man. I I've been like that's why this morning with with Anna's death, like it's been. Uh, it hit really close to home because since I released that video, I've been harassed daily by people who would create new accounts and would go on all platforms of social media just to send me like hate messages. And uh, Kimberly was vocal about it too. She got death threats when she called out that she had been sexually harassed at CCW. A lot of girls, like this whole thing opened up like Pandora's box. A lot of girls who had issues like sexual harassment, sexual comments, finally had the strength to come out and be vocal about it. And of course, a lot of people were like, well, um, 
it's your fault you're wearing sexy outfits, but they won't mention anything about the guys wrestling in trucks. But it's the girls' fault. So thank God there's only a very few people who did that. And most of the community has been extremely supportive since yesterday. I have Mick Foley's support, which he's been such a blessing. Like I was feeling pretty down with the whole thing because I'm, I'm one of those people, unfortunately, who will focus more on the negative I see, even if like there's 10 people versus a thousand people. But he's been really helpful and loving towards women's wrestling uh, as a whole. Mikey Whipwreck also was very vocal about it. Uh, Ricky Champagne, former CCW champ, uh, champion, like really vocal about it. David Starr, um, Shug Duncanson, and so many other like more wrestlers came out in support of all the women's wrestlers. Beyond wrestling, like even promotion, Shimmer and Rise were really, really uh, helping us too with the support and saying that they had been approached to by the same company to get their footage. And they said, no, we don't do that. This is disgusting to a talent. So at least, you know, there's there's a positive in that where the wrestling community is coming together because women's wrestling, uh, the evolution, it doesn't come from WWE. It comes from the hard work to the independent, to the knockouts, to then WWE. It's been a very long road. And a lot of people, uh, the independent people, and then a little bit like higher, they, they know the whole story that this is not new. It's been such a long road. And that one promotion is trying to bring us back for the sake of having more views or whatever and trying to destroy everything we've built. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of love and that's what I try to focus on. But the bad is so bad that we see it today that word, words can kill. And it, it's uh, it's terrible. Like so, So to jump even further off of that point, because... Clearly, there's been a massive amount of support. And mm -hmm. now, I like WWE, and I don't mean to throw them under the bus, but I haven't seen support out of them, and I don't think it's non-existent. I just think that there are certain things and people are protecting their own careers, and especially the women's division in particular, I haven't seen much support of And this is not a shot at them. But what I mm -hmm. have seen is that there's a lot of, I guess, companies above not not above, but slightly below, I should say. I misspoke there. Slightly below, like Impact and a few others around that have been very, very supportive. And mm -hmm. Amber Lee, who is now back in Impact, um, and then I think, I don't know if Taya has been outspoken about it, but I know Jordan Grace has been. Uh, Jordan, and, Jordan asked. Uh, Gil Kim was very supportive. Uh, Rebel, former TNA knockout, uh, tweeted. I knew Kira Ogan retweeted the video. Um, so so what yeah. has that been like? Because, you know, if this was a run-of-the-mill thing, that probably wouldn't have happened. But given that this is a big deal, and that it's been gaining attention and it's been gaining a lot more attention in, I guess, the week that it's been out there and that kind of the story is getting clearer. And that's why we're taking time to talk about it in a very mm -hmm. slow method because that four minute video, and this isn't a shot, I don't want it to be interpreted that way, was not, gave it in a very condensed format. And I think this is really clarifying what happened, why it happened, and the fact that there's so much support out there and it's really gotten global at this point. What is that like for you? Because it's a lot of pressure. Uh, it, it, it's really like when I see all the support, especially with people, like I said, like Mick Foley and Gail Kim. And because uh, I know they've been there through their career where people doubted them, um, all the women or Mick. You know, he had like a hardcore, how many people did you hear that? Oh, hardcore is wrong, but he is such an icon and such a nice guy. And, you know, behind every wrestler, there's human beings and there's like beautiful human beings out there uh, that don't deserve to be bullied or called out or whatever. So the support, like, like I said, for me, that was really hard to do because calling out CCW is like calling out, um, your house. Like, I'm very grateful for everything they did for me, especially John Zanding. And, but I, 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 I know he would not take it personally because it's really the new management because I've always been treated really well by him. Um, 
And I'm grateful and honored that he would see me as his champion, that I would be able to share the cage of that with him and Nick Gage and Lobo. Um, but yeah, I mean, the more support we have, the more people are going to be aware that there has been such an evolution when it comes to women's wrestling. We can't go back. We can only move forward from now on. Um, intergender wrestling is a lot easier now because uh, our fellow male wrestler sees us as competitor, as equal. They only want to have good matches with us now. They don't even see our gender. And I mean, gender should not be a thing. And this is 2020, whether you're black or Asian or gay or a trans or, or, or uh, a, a female or a male, wrestling is for everyone. It can be a beautiful community getting together and creating magic in a ring and great matches and entertain people. And a lot of people go to wrestling to change their minds from the week of work they had. It needs to be focused, like we need to focus on what's positive about it. And the fact that this community is all coming together now and they're helping the women um, with, with, with this thing that is absolutely wrong. Uh, I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. Like I, I'm trying to find the words but it's it's been so tough because the harassment like it was like night and day everywhere it slowed down and i know i know for a fact that with people like gail kim and mick foley and mikey whipwreck being so supportive i know it, it helped like people's like whoa this is serious this is not just snowflake girls going around and crying no no this is this is people like kind of killing the work we've been working for. For for me, it's been, uh, it'll be 24 years as I'm wrestling. I have to fight the governments for, for women's rights in Canada. Um, I got beat up so bad because I had no women opponents. So I had to face the guy who didn't want to wrestle the girls. Uh, I'm pretty sure Soraya Knight in England has the same type of, you know, stories or Madison Eagle in Australia. Uh, I th there's all like different women all over the world who've worked so hard to build their division up to now uh, women in main eventing WrestleMania WWE. It's a very long road. We've worked really hard for it. So please, when we trust you with our image and you promised us that this is serious, just, you know, it's a promise. Keep it. Yeah. Let's talk about that because mm -hmm. clearly there has been a significant amount of issues, and and in general, and I hate to say this, and we're going to talk about this in a few more minutes with what just happened in the last two days, but harassment in the wrestling community as a whole, you know, Billy Dixon was on my main podcast, and he was talking about it, and I just had Russell Rogue on last night talking, and then obviously Billy and Russell are both gay. And they were talking about harassment of being gay wrestlers and being, you know, I guess, you know, digged at and ribbed a little bit in certain ways and other incidents happening. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't want to go into any more details because that's their things when they want to talk about it. But mm -hmm. there's been sexual assault in that realm. And then even with female competitors, there's been things like that and also the managerial role has been, you know, bestowed or shoved on. And mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with, with a woman who wants to be a female manager. There's nothing wrong with that if, if she so chooses and doesn't want to actually wrestle. Like, Selena Vega can wrestle. I was going to say, Selena Vega is doing a great job. I wrestled her. She knows how to wrestle, but she's doing such an incredible job. Or you go back a few years, Vicky Guerrero was a great manager. I mean, you. I think managers are a lost art. Like you need manager. They had, they have to the match, whether they're yeah. male or female. Um, it doesn't matter which yeah. gender they are. Like you said, they add to the show. It's cool when there's like one of them. Um, but Reason. yeah, if you're a manager, do whatever a manager will do. If you're a wrestler, you do something else. You have two different roles. Reason why I bring it up is that there's nothing wrong with if you choose to do something in the wrestling world. It's when you're forced to do something. And I bring up the harassment because there is a lot of harassment online. And, and I know that women typically get it more. And, and I don't know where exactly it's come from. I don't have the breakdown. But what is that like? Because in many ways, this incident, and, I, and we don't have statistics or anything, but it's not mm -hmm. that hard of a leap 
that this kind of opens that up a little bit more yeah. of this company doing it. And I think it's Stonecutter Media, I want yes. to say, is the rebranding. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is that like? Because this kind of opens that up and... I don't want to say it gives it an okay, but it gives it closer to an it okay. Pretty much it does. It does because, and here's why I'm going to explain. Um, even before the CZW, all this, the rebranding, uh, because we are female fighters and we do have spandex outfit, already for some men we are some sort of uh, fantasy, which is fine. I mean, a woman can have a fantasy looking at a baseball player. Um, whatever floats your boat, there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is when you're branding us this way, uh, people think it's okay for, uh, I got, I had people, I had to close my DMS on Twitter and, uh, Instagram because it was to the point where people were trying to call me on Instagram for sex chat. And then I got uh, plenty of dick pics. Um, and then like, Hey, are you available for wrestling sessions? And Hey, send me a pics of your boobs and I'll send you my, my dick and stuff. I'm like, why do you think I'm, I'm, I'm doing this? What does it say underneath my name? It says professional wrestler. It's like, Oh, the, all women wrestlers do that. Uh, I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, it's not because like, uh, just give you an example. I've lost a lot of weight lately. So it's like, Oh my God, I have abs now or a little bit. <laughs> So I took a picture of my abs and then there was a guy going like, oh, see, you're trying to like objectify yourself and you're an hypocrite because this is sexual. I'm like, what is sexual about somebody working hard, like in the gym and being proud? So you're telling me I can't go on the beach wearing a bikini because I should be wearing like uh, a full like suit because I'm a woman. I need to hide myself completely. It, it really it really goes from one extreme to the other where you have those very supportive people that was like, hey, you look good. I like we like to see the progress. This is inspiring to me. I'm trying to lose weight too. And then you got the, oh, that's it, you're a slut. <laughs> I'm like, so yeah, the the dick pics, the messages, the um, um people calling me was the the creepiest thing. Like I would see my Instagram calling, it was like what the hell is like, Hey, you know, pick up. I want to have sex chat with you. I'm like, that's not what I do. There's, there's people paid for that. You, you know, go ahead. But yeah, they just, because, well, you're hot and sweaty and top heavy and whatever you're available for sex chat or, um, send me pics of you nudes or, uh, I got also like, uh, I, I sell like collector's item online. Like if I have a gear that I wore, I'm going to sell it, sign it and people frame it. Like I, I have fans sending me like they all have their, it looks almost like a hall of fame. Like they frame gears of people and it's really cool. I have some stuff like people, that. Every time I will put something online like this, like, Hey, selling your panties or your dirty socks. Or I was like, no, <laughs> I'm selling collector's item I actually wore in a wrestling ring. I'm going to sign it <laughs> with a picture, too. But, yeah, it goes, yeah, like, because of everything that women wrestlers are sexy and they're promoted as sexy, it, it opens up the door to people thinking we're going to do more. And, and clearly... <laughs> This, that was this. a very long answer for your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You're fine. We're live. We're live. And clearly, <laughs> we, we've gone past the point of controversial. And I'm mm -hmm. well aware that where this was going to go. Because this was how it was set up. I said in the email, for everybody who knows, that you can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to censor. It's live. We're live right now. You know, whether Facebook keeps it on or not, I don't think that's going to be an issue. <laughs> Hopefully somebody won't report it. Um, hopefully a bunch of people in these wrestling groups are going to appreciate it. But I think this is really important because, you know, and, and look, you know, I, I think some people in this community go a little too far with what they do. And what, mm -hmm. and there's somebody I'm thinking of, and I think they, they took a step too far. But clearly we, we see it a lot. With, with a lot of female wrestlers, and, you know, it, it, it's a problem. And, you know, it, it, and even Becky Lynch a little while ago had had an incident where somebody was touching her. 
And then I yeah. forgot I forgot who who what else was happening. Maybe something happened with Alexa Bliss. I want to say as well. Uh, I think Natalia. Somebody grabbed her boob at her show. Uh, yeah, was it was it good. Natty or was it Alexa? It, it was uh, one or the I, other. I, I forget I which. Alexa, but yeah, I know a female wrestler from WB. Somebody just grabbed her boob out of nowhere, and you're like, I'm here to work. I'm here to wrestle, and like right in front of everybody. Like, whoop, it's like, yeah. And it's wrong. I mean, and, and 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 not to not to take away, but there's also an incident with Chuck O'Neill at Beyond Wrestling where somebody grabbed Chuck O'Neill, and 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 that's not a good idea because Chuck is is a very scary man. But for those who don't know, just 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 to give a little quick story about Chuck. Chuck O'Neill was on the Ultimate Fighter, and his coach was Brock Lesnar. And and I remember it because this was televised. Or, or streamed, and it it happened in such a way. So with that Alexa Bliss and Natalia thing, that mm-hmm. wasn't really caught the way it was caught with Chuck O'Neill. And I would imagine that, you know, somebody touching Chuck O'Neill, and it's going to sound sexist what I'm about to say, and slightly controversial. It's not as bad as as you know. But the thing is, it, it is as bad. Like. He, he didn't go there to be, like, like grab. <laughs> but, yeah, because, I don't know, because it's a guy, it's funny, I guess so. It's like when you see a girl's ass, it's sexual. When you see a guy's ass, it's funny. It's still an ass. <laughs> well, unless it's effies, but that's a different discussion. I know. <laughs> but, 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 but I bring it up because clearly there, there is a double standard, and, 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 and to some degree, rightfully so. And, you know... I, I so this kind of does do that, and I think that's one of the biggest things, and that's what we're seeing on Twitter. And I think a lot of people understand it. Like I don't think I think it's a very small minority of wrestling fans who are like this. I really do. I don't yeah. think it's the majority. I think that it's also the idea that you know the Indies definitely push this. You push this. I mean, you said that you fought Canada on human rights issues and that that's a fascinating thing and paved the way for a lot of intergender wrestling in that regard and i think wwe solidified this position of that you know that wrestlemania moment was very much a solidification and it was Mm -hmm. very much i don't want to say the end game but i want to say kind of a notch and a checkpoint yeah like i said it's like it was a long road and it went step by step with the WrestleMania women main event thing. Uh, so yeah, it's like some 20 years to get to this point. So it's, it was long. So we would love to stay where we're at now and not go backwards. And, and I agree. And one, one of the things that I kind of want to talk about going forward here is that clearly this video is out. It's a lot of heat on CCW. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. Clearly, fans aren't happy. You know, wrestling as a whole is relatively beat up. Mm-hmm. And then, what is now being pushed forward? Because nobody really knows what what what's going on. Because it's kind of hard to figure out a consequence. Because it's not, you know, you know. I'm a capitalistic guy, and I believe that mm-hmm. if this happened during, you know, a wrestling show, I would like to believe that the free market would solve it. The problem mm-hmm. is that, and, and my free market solution is that people would say, hey, I'm not going to a WSU show. And, and, and it would solve itself relatively quickly. Mm-hmm. That, that's how I view it. And then people can disagree. But clearly, we're not doing any shows right now, not because of yeah. this issue, but Corona-19 or COVID-19. So what is going on? Because it's kind of a tricky landscape that this all came out in. Yeah, it is like what will happen. Um, or what's going on, I, just in general, I, yeah. with this. Like I don't know at this moment. the The important thing for me was to make people aware that this was happening, and especially the women wrestlers that they know from now on that if they do go there, that's how they're going to be marketed. Uh, if they choose to go, then it's on them. But at least they need to know what they're signing up for, and they need to know that somebody else is involved in this that doesn't care about wrestling, just wants girls to, you know, 
sex sells and that's it. I don't care if you're an athlete or not. I'm going to sell your boobs and ass and that's it. I just want them to be aware. And I want people to make, um, you know, to have a clear idea on what CCW is doing with the women. If they choose to go, it's their choice. But at least now that they know and that they've been supportive of women's wrestling and they know how hard it's been to get there, now they can make the choice because they have all the elements they need to make that right or wrong choice, whatever, whatever they choose to do. They can say, I'm not going to support this product from now on because I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong to the talent who, you know, sweat, bled, um, and worked for them when they were expecting something else. Um, is it, is anything going to happen with, with Stonecutter Media? Are they going to change is there any legal thing to do? I mean, um, a lot of people from bigger promotions who reach out says there's a thing called defamation because this is not what you guys sign up for. Is there anyone who wants to fight them in court and spend the money? That's another story. Um, but yeah, I just want people to be aware that this is happening. And with all the information, you make your own decision if you're going to support this uh, product or not. And right now, what we see is that not only the wrestlers don't want to go anymore, the fans, a lot of them sent me print screen of them canceling their subscription to CZW Studios. So, yeah, they're, they're, the fans are actually um, being on our side in showing CZW that uh, – the wrestlers did not sign up for this, but so did the fans. They they wanted to see good women's wrestling, and they want to um, they want to support what we're doing as wrestlers. Uh, and they're they're showing them right now what will happen about following COVID nineteen. Uh, I have no clue, but at least now fans and wrestlers they have all the tools in their hands to make their own decision. I would say that they have a bunch of facts and this story is getting clearer and obviously I'm hoping this helps get that position mm -hmm. clearer. And I am curious about two more companies and I don't know if you know them or you heard about them. So everybody in the DMV area has a Nova story and oh, yeah. that, that, that's a fun one and that's somewhat similar of what's going on, slightly different and then capital wrestling and that company is now rebranding and it's kind of a big deal and a lot of stuff's happened in that company. And then we could throw in a third one, which is pride of wrestling. I want to say, mm -hmm. I think in New York city and, and that company has had its own issues as well, but very differently than, than the other two for, for the obvious reason. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Um, the, the other, the last two you mentioned, I don't know much about. And as for Nova, I've worked with them on a few shows. And then I moved from the United States to Canada when I had to deal with my old cancer thing. And so what happened really, I'm, I'm not even sure. Cause I, I haven't been able to talk to someone and get the full story. The only thing right now is that since CZW is exposed so badly on what they're doing now, I think it's going to help the other people like being more aware of if somebody else is doing something like this. Now the, you know, people are going to see right away what's going on. Um, there's one, or maybe it's going to discourage them to do anything without their talent knowing, or cause they know like the, the power of, of social media and the fans boycotting like a, a, um, a product. It can be really strong. So hopefully, not only it's going to help uh, the wrestlers make their own right decisions and the fans, but also companies who thought about doing the same thing are going to think about it twice before trying something like that. And then now I want to change gears. And I, and I definitely want to ask you about this, because that Canada thing with you fighting, I think it was Ontario, is so fascinating for so many reasons. I think that Canada is incredibly intelligent and also incredibly stupid <laughs> and, 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 and idiotic <laughs> and, 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 and certain things in that. And this is definitely in the idiotic factor. 
<laughs> so what was that like and what happened with that? Because that's a big moment, I think, in intergender wrestling. I think that it's one of those moments that is not actually cited. And it should be. Because mm-hmm. clearly, I'm going to let you tell the story, actually, because you know it better than me. <laughs> um, I So I've been involved in intergender, intergender wrestling since, like, end of 97. When I started wrestling, I was the only girl in the class. Uh, then I had one girl to wrestle with for a few shows, and then she stopped. So I was by myself. And as much as people were trying to tell me, well, you need to be a manager, it's like, no, I want to be a wrestler. So I was like, I'm going to wrestle the guy. So that was really not like a popular decision. Um, but I kept going and either if, if like, even if people were like beating me up and guys didn't want to wrestle me, I would at least get that one or two guys that were like, I'm going to do it. So we would go out there and prove people that this could work. So I ended up wrestling uh, in the United States, uh, more the northern part of Vermont and um and Maine, and also New Hampshire, but I also ended up in Ontario, where I actually won my first male championship in 1998. Uh, I was a cruiserweight champion, and then uh, I ended up in Quebec winning a provincial championships, two tag team championships, like all male abroad championships, and I even got the main championship of a promotion called All Star Wrestling in Ontario uh, in 2001. And it's funny we're talking about that. I just posted a picture about that championship like a few, like about an hour ago. Um, so I was doing my Ontario thing and I got picked up by a promotion called the Hardcore Wrestling Federation. And they knew I was doing the hardcore in Quebec. So it was like, hey, we're going to bring it here because a girl doing that, we think it's cool. So they were very supportive. Uh, so I was doing matches with Tyson Dukes and um, I was in a feud with a guy called Pitbull and uh, Jack Damage, and we uh, one point they wanted to book me on another show that was uh, kind of related to uh, Hardcore Wrestling Federation. We were a table dev match in the main event in the city of Toronto. I was the only girl, of course, <laughs> and um, somebody called the Athletic Commission and complained that there was a girl in a man's match when there was a law that stated women and men cannot be in the ring at the same time. So a lot of people didn't know about this uh, this rule. I'm not even sure the Ontario Commission knew about it, but it was in the book, so they had to respect it. So I was told, if you don't wrestle women, and there was no women, so I was like, uh, you'll be banned from Ontario, so you can't come here anymore. So I was like, this is so wrong. They're stopping me from doing something because I'm a woman. So what I did is I did a little bit of research with uh, – on the internet, with internet was not that cool back then. This was this was the the <laughs> infancy of the internet. This was dial up, right? <laughs> so I managed to find the human rights uh, number on there, and I called them and I explained what happened. And uh, the lady went silent for a set for a second. She goes, "Oh, girl, you got a case." <laughs> So they sent me some papers and it took three years, almost four years of bureaucracy of papers and calls. Like back then also phone calls were like expensive. <laughs> so I spent so much money on phone phone calls and sending in papers and there was lawyers from the human rights fighting for me against the commission. They went to court. They couldn't find like a, uh, an arrangement or something. So it went higher. So that's why it lasted so long. And then one day, um, 2004, I think, I get the call from the human rights saying, hey, you've won. They're down. Like, we're going to remove that law that's against women, against gender, and that is wrong. And you made it. Like, you've won. And not only did the rule get removed from the books, but, like, a few Weeks later, the athletic commission said, like, we don't want to deal with wrestling anymore. So the whole wrestling part of the athletic commission was removed. So not only the ruling was taken down, but I took down the whole commission. You picked the wrong career. (laughs) I should have been a lawyer or something. should have been a politician. (laughs) Yeah, that too. (laughs) No, I don't know. um, I'm laughing, but I'm... 
when when I feel something is wrong, I'm not one of those who can't do nothing. It bothers me to the point where I can't sleep. It's like, this is so wrong. We got to do something. When I see things happening online, I'm like, I want to go and get involved. It's like, relax. This is not your business. <laughs> Shut the hell up. And but when it's it hits close to home and professional wrestling has been in my life, like I said, for close to 25 years, it's been a very hard road. But I'm really grateful for all the memories I have and the friends I made and the, the countries I've seen and the opportunities I had. I feel like I, it's always been my mission to defend it, support it. And especially when it comes to a female wrestlers, when I started, nobody wanted to help me and people were laughing at me. You take this too seriously. You're just a girl, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, feel like it's it's a mission for me so it doesn't happen to the younger generation so when i saw the ccw thing happen i it, it was the same calling as the ontario uh human rights stuff it was like this is wrong and on top of this i can't believe i'm hearing this in 2020 because we're talking 2001 and 2020 that that's a lot of years in between and it's still happening this is wrong so i have to say something like it like I was saying earlier, it bothered me for weeks before I actually, you know, I'm going to get my hands dirty and somebody has to do it. Yeah. And, and obviously we're talking about Canada and it would be remiss of me and irresponsible of me not to mention this other person and this match. And it's always played on IWTV and that's the Josh Alexander match. What was it? Four chair shots? And you grab the chair after like four of them, and then you had a chair, and he has a chair in the ring, and it's like this showdown, and it's this epic <laughs> moment. And everybody who watches IWTV knows this match. It's it's one of the craziest things. Was it C four? It was C four wrestling. Yeah, indeed. And the week that they announce um, this match, please, please explain Josh who Josh Alexander. Alexander's is first. I, I, it's really important to explain. That like he's like a big freaking monster yeah, of a man. For those who don't know Josh Alexander, he's the current Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champion. With Ethan Page. He's a huge dude, and he's so good, so athletic, so strong. I can't say any, you know, I can't say there's not enough words to describe how good he, Josh his Twitter Alexander. handle says it all. It's walking weapon. Walking the walking weapon, exactly. So I was very nervous about this match, and I was like, "He's so good. Can I, can I go in there and go toe to toe?" And a few days before a match, she tweets about first time I saw Lafisto life. Her and Necro Butcher were punching each other, shoot in the face, and I will never forget about that. So. The way the match starts with the two chairs, with us sitting, like sitting at, at it's. It's really like a little wink, wink to the Necro Butcher uh, match where we punch each other in the face sitting on chairs, uh, the bar fight spot, they call it. And that's why I was like, he was like uh, kind of laughing at me at the beginning of the match. I get out, get the chairs and I say, sit your ass down. And people started, sit, sit, sit. And then the crowd went nuts the whole match from it. And um it's one of those matches that I was watching a little bit yesterday because I was looking for a clip. And it, it's one of those matches, especially the ending. Like, I tear up every time I watched it because I, I, got, as well. I got my ass kicked <laughs> really bad. And at the end, as I'm slowly getting up, all the fans stood up, gave me a standing ovation, and ran to the ring to clap on the mat. And it's a magical moment. It's it's the best word I can find. If, if somebody wants to see it, it is on my YouTube channel. I only put like the standing ovation, but it's, it's one of my favorite matches of all time. It's uh, I was thinking, I thought I was going towards retirement because uh, my knee was like, ah, eh, not too good. And I was tired of it and I was planning to retire. And when this match happened and this reaction, I was like, Oh, it kind of made me think, and I went backstage and I talked to the promoter. I'm like, well, maybe I still have it. And Mark from C4 is like, no, you never lost it. You only think you did. And then I was like, okay. 
We're, I think we're, I think we're good. <laughs> so, so just, just to even talk a little bit about that, because it's an intense match. I think it's on IWTV. It is. It is. Yeah. You know, you know, it's probably somewhere on YouTube as well. It's not, it's not a hard match to find. It's not even that long of a match in reality. But but it's it's an intense match, and they, they, there are shots. The shot that IWTV uses is that they show Josh Alexander being like shocked that he can't <laughs> take you down. It, 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 it's it's really an amazing thing. And if you're a wrestling fan, it's one of those matches that's just such an amazing match to watch, and it's really a nice match to watch as well. And it's intense. It's intense. And it reminds me of, like, the rules were bent. Let's just say the rules were extremely <laughs> bent during that match. And, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Yeah, it was a no DQ, so, hey, we used, <laughs> we used what we could find. <laughs> there, there was a lot of stuff in that match. And yeah. <laughs> rules were bent. Let's, let's just leave it at that. But yeah. anyhow. <laughs> it's one of my favorite matches, though. It is. Anyhow, I kind of want to talk about what I, we mentioned at the start of this. And that's the other stuff that's happened this week. And I'm just curious about your take on it. And it's not as pleasant as, as that match is. But clearly we've had two pretty significant situations slash deaths in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Shad, and for those who don't know who Shad was, he was from Crime Time. And I guess a riptide caught him and his son. And then he put his son ahead of him. And unfortunately he didn't make it. And then... Hana from Stardom. Oh, yeah. It, um, and everything that's going on. And I guess, you know, we, we, we don't, we know very little about that. Beyond that, there was a lot of cyber bullying involved. But we don't really know everything about that yet. Mm -hmm. And so, what is your take on that? Because they're very different situations. Very different situations, but very, both are both sad. Um, when it comes to Shad, um, I don't want to say that there's beauty and death, but when it comes to him to make the ultimate sacrifice as a parent to save his son is so like, I don't even know if there's it's, a word. It's, it's very like, uplifting and it shows the love that he had it, for his kid. Yeah, and, as and, a parent, that you are selfless and you're going to put your children before. And a lot of people, like, mention the word hero. And I truly believe that, yes, he is indeed a hero. Um, through death, he, yeah, he made sure that his son will go on and have a life. And I'm, I'm someone who lived without a father because my father died when I was really young. And it's really, really tough. So I've, I've been thinking a lot about his son, trying to think how, how is he living with that? Because I, I hope that he won't get the survivor like guilt because his father died for him. Because, um, my God, it's, it's such a tough, tough thing to talk about. Because like I said, it's, there's beauty in it. But there's infinite sadness for the wife who lost the husband and the son who literally was with his dad and his dad saved his life only to see him, like, disappear. Um, gosh, I can't, I can't only imagine what they're going through. Yeah. And then, obviously, the other one, which is breaking news and, and for, for those who don't know um that was on apple had had an article about it it's trending on twitter i don't know if shad was trending on twitter but i believe yeah he was hannah it very much is and, and i don't know as much about her and it, it's she was in stardom very young 22 and mm. A lot of stuff is going on, and it kind of relates to a little bit of this CZW stuff with harassment is involved. So I don't know what your take is on it because you're, you're in the business. I am sort of in a weird place because I am a fan who interviews a lot of wrestlers, but I am not in the business, and I can only react as a fan. I can't react as a wrestler. The, the only thing – I mean, the main thing people have to – be aware 
is that behind every wrestler there is a human being. You don't know what they're going through in their day, you know, in their daily lives. You know, you don't know their full story. Um, like I, with the CCW thing, I had people analyzing me, like if they knew me for 20 years. I kind of feel the same thing was happening to her. People were judging her and analyzing her and telling her everything was wrong. And um, fortunately, I can't understand all the Japanese tweets that were sent to her. But it, it shows that words can be um, can kill someone. Like, how much can a person take of being constantly harassed and bullied to the point where she can't go? Uh, she's the public figure. She needs to go online. Now it's the way it works. Um, everything goes through social media. So you can't escape it. And then every time she was going online, there was somebody or many people harassing her. And to use the words of, of Mick Foley, he said, like, she was 22 years old. Let that sink in. 22 years old. It's it's like and there's no there's no age for uh, bullying and harassment. Whatever age you are, it, it hurts. And um, for some people, they're gonna grow stronger from from all the age. But there's a lot of them. I mean, we know of Anna because she was a public figure. But how many people? in your neighborhood that actually do commit suicide because of all the bullying and the bad stuff people say about them that most of the time are not even true. It's just people thinking they know what they're talking about. A lot of people, especially online are keyboard warriors and they're very ignorant about what they're, what they're talking about. They don't do research. They have no clue. They just go with their opinions and they don't even know the person that they're judging. And that hurts. Um, Dive, if if you guys can go on Soraya Knight's um, Instagram, she posted a message, and I'm choking up just to re like remember remembering the words she um, she was saying when all the things happened with Paige. Uh, it, it was really hard on their families, and there was extreme bullying and harassment and nonstop for the Knight's family and. I mean, her message is so, so strong. Uh, the only thing I can, I can hope is that cyberbullying, uh, you know, they, we got to do something about it because uh, I was trying to get that guy kicked out of Twitter and Twitter was doing absolutely nothing, even if what he was saying was against all women and he was repeating himself like nonstop, nonstop on everything that I would write. Um, so, yeah, the social media platforms are not doing much. And I myself, when I called the police, I was told, like, oh, you haven't been harassed for long enough. Okay, when do you judge as long enough? People, like, this girl, she died. She's not here anymore. She, like, a mother lost her, her child today. And a lot of my wrestling peers lost a friend. Um I'm thinking of Thunder Rosa. I'm, I'm thinking of Hudson Envy. I'm thinking of Layla Hirsch. Like all Mamet these women. Bell is another one. Yeah. They all work with her up close and she was nice to them. She was a great human being to them. And now today she's not, she's gone. Why? For something that really could have been like, stop. So I just, I just hope that she won't die in vain and that people will learn from this. First of all, you don't go online, analyze people and pretend you know what you're talking about and just bully people. There's a human being behind that wrestling persona, that musician persona that's like, there's an artist there. There's, there's a, the, there's a, um, you know, a hockey player, whatever they're doing in the public eye, there's a person behind and you don't know their story. Just be aware of that and just be kind. And now I think that kind of says it all and I don't think we could say it any better. But I do want to talk about something else and a few more things. And one of those is, cause we sort of mentioned it before with CCW and it's a little branch off of that. What do you think is kind of going to be the next step for wrestling 
with COVID-19. And I'm going to just say it this way, is that I come from the con world. And what's happening right now is that some conventions are opening up. I had somebody mm-hmm. earlier on tell me that Tampa is saying we're going ahead on July 17th in Florida. And th- there, are, there are a variety of concerns about that, um, both from, from, from a logistics standpoint and then on top of just who's going to show up. And I'm a big DC, primetime wrestling. Gator was on, Ariel Nicks, who you know, was on, and a bunch of other wrestlers were on. And I'm just curious, what do you feel is sort of the next step and when we're coming back? Because there's two sides to it, and I want to get this out, and I'm going to let you speak. Um, The first side is the performers and people put the ring together, and a lot of these things are held in bars and other Mm -hmm. venues or even schools sometimes or Mm -hmm. public rec centers. And then the other component of it, which is just as important, is the fans and how they feel comfortable. Because a lot of these indie shows, and I know Primetime and Gator said it, and I think he's going to mind me saying it again. They can't run a fanless show. They need that fan money and those ticket money. So, mm-hmm. And then and, and just, just, just to give CCW and WSU some, some praise for a second, they have the funds to run a fanless show because they've been around for so long. Regardless of this situation, you know, I, I believe in giving credit where credit's due, but a lot of promotions can't. And so I'm just curious what you feel is sort of the next step and where we're going and when things get back to normal, let's see. Uh, the question is, will things get back to normal? Um, that question, too, you can answer. Not only, yeah, not only am I a pro wrestler, but I do work uh, at a company that provides and produces sanitary products. So we get a lot of input, and I mean, a lot of the news on what's really going on. And the thing with, uh, COVID-19 is right now things are, especially uh, I'm talking for Canada, the government here has been so good at uh, confining people and making sure everybody's safe and people wear the mask and people wash their hands. And uh, they've been like really, really good. And I will really give credit to my government for that, uh, helping people with the money and everything. Um, but the thing with COVID-19 is we don't know if it's going to slow down, if it's going to pick up, if there's going to be like, they call it like a second wave of the virus. Is it going to slow down and then somebody else going to have it and then spread again? Uh, there's no, the problem right now is that there's no vaccine and there's no medication. Uh, whatever people say right now at this very moment, nothing fixes the problem. Also, there's a lack of information. Lack of information. Big lack of information. And that's a problem. And then even the communication of that information as well. But continue. Exactly. And I mean, uh, don't shoot yourself with Lysol. Do not take, uh, uh, what's the chloral, um, I I can't even remember the name, chlor, whatever people say you need to take. This is wrong too. Like, you got to wait. Like, scientists are working on it and they're working on it a lot faster than they would on any other occasions but it takes but time I mean, it's it takes time and they will need to test it and that's that's a few months and i mean uh here things are starting to be back to normal a little bit the only thing they're asking if if you go out uh, if you can wear a mask please do because if you have it at least you're going to stop from spreading it because um, the the virus goes around with um, the like the, the 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 water that's coming out of your mouth. If that makes sense. That's and if it spreads, that's when the virus is going, uh, you know, to other people. And so they're like, if you can do that, stay uh, six feet away. So if you, you sneeze or something, you have time to cover, or at least if you sneeze, you're far enough that it's not going to get on the other person. Um, so the problem with wrestling shows, I mean, with wrestlers, it can be limited. Let's say we're going to do six wrestlers and everybody's fine. Nobody has symptoms. Uh, we're going to do this card and that's it with the one referee. Like there's way to work it. The only thing with the fans is how do you put fans in a crowd and spread them wide enough so there's no contact and 
you kind of lose the, the the fun of it, and it, it's a gathering that that is you know everybody together, and you're losing that. Are promotions ready to do that? Are fans ready to do that? Or I'm a big concert person. Like I, I go see metal shows nonstop. And right now, at this very moment, I don't see myself going into a metal show, into the mosh pit with people like sweating on me and, you know, hitting each other and having fun. Because if somebody has it in that room, everybody's going to have it. So it starts from one person to 50 to 500 to however many people there is in that room. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, can wrestling show? I mean, all elite is doing it. Impact is doing it. WWE is doing it where they have shows without crowd. But for an independent wrestling that, done, that really doesn't hard. really work. Really, <laughs> really hard, hard to hard do it. Unless really they want to try to do like materials that they can sell online. But then again, people have less money because a lot of people are not working. It's like, it's such a vicious cycle. Um, so how long this is going to take? I mean, how long will it take to have a vaccine or at least medication that if you're sick, it gets fixed like easily? On that note, <laughs> we're going to start wrapping <laughs> up. Because cause I, 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 <laughs> there's nothing I can ask on the COVID-19 thing anymore because we is, don't know. <laughs> That's where we're at. It is what it is. <laughs> But I, I did shoot you a message in Skype, and we're going to stick to it, that you get to pick a shirt. And so you have a lot of power. You can pick something really, really cool for me or something really bad that I'm going to pick up. And so I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm a little scared what she's going to pick for me. For, for my T-shirts. Like, I have so many. A um, little bit scared. I so coming. I have a new one coming. <laughs> Ooh, well, well, let's describe it if you can. I call it the metal goddess. It, it's it looks like a, a like a metal shirt with something that probably Alice Cooper would sell. <laughs> so it's really cool. It was designed by Off the Dead, who makes like the All Elite T-shirts, and it, it's pretty cool. So this one's coming. And if you're an Iron Maiden shirt, I got one that's inspired by the Trooper, and I got one that says the Wounded Owl University. Like the so CC, like I'm black scared. And like color, they're all black. <laughs> I'm scared because you could pick something that's like really girly and it's gonna look ridiculous on me. I don't have really girly shirts. Most of them are black and white or black, red and white. Well, well, well uh, like I'm the, sure. When I was like in doing an anime gimmick, might be a little bit more girly. But if you look at the last T-shirts I have, they're really more like male oriented. <laughs> like, well, like, well, I get inspired by metal, so you you have the power. So whatever link you send me, I'm gonna buy that one, and then I will That's post cute. up on Twitter <laughs> which one I am getting. So for everybody who's <laughs> watching this, you know, it's either gonna be really good or really bad, and so we're gonna leave it at that. But having speaking about. You know, promotions, because, because, so she's going to do that after, and then I'll post it up on Twitter along with this interview <laughs> so everybody can see. And uh, I might be shooting myself in the foot here, but anyway, I do want to give you an opportunity to promote yourself because you do have a pro wrestling tease, you have social media, you're getting a lot of attention as is. I don't know if you got a Facebook page, and I don't know anything else you got going on, but definitely feel free to share. I, uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's Wounded Al Lefisto, uh, at Lefisto on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Lefisto on Facebook. I got a Patreon.com slash Lefisto. Uh, my Patreon is mostly like matches and funny stories from the road. I do vlogs. I do all kinds of stuff, uh, pretty much for hardcore fans and uh, like fun stuff. There's nothing. Sorry, there's no nudity. <laughs> I describe myself as a coffee addict, a metal headbanger. So lots, I like exclusive. I do when I go to the concerts. When there's concert, like exclusive um, material and, and images and pictures and everything, I take at the concerts. Uh, besides that, uh, if you can't remember all this, lufisto.com is my website. All the links are there. And uh, if you want to write to me, uh, it's lofisto at hotmail.com. And I try to answer everybody. Unless you send me something really creepy, then I won't. 
Well, on that note, we're going to end, but I'm going to say it, and I've been saying it to everybody who's been on, that definitely go support people financially, whether it's comic book people, wrestlers, voice actors, the few cosplayers who have been on, you know, whatever they got for sale, definitely go out and support them, check out what they're doing, and if you can't do that because you're taking care of your family, but you still have electricity and the internet, there's no good reason for you not to follow somebody on Facebook, social media, Check out their website. Check out anything they're doing that's free because that definitely helps the algorithms. As well as if you just tweet, say, hey, Lufisto, I love your match with Josh Alexander. Or say, oh, you deserve it. And the, the little clappy emoji, something like that on Twitter is usually good. Don't be a dick. <laughs> so so, so clearly don't do that. But, but if you say, hey, you know, I really enjoyed your match, just sort on IWTV. You know, it definitely helps, and that actually is just as important as buying a shirt because that it helps is. let people know, or even retweeting. If you have, if you can't think of something witty to say or you think you're pushing the line, retweeting something or liking something is also amazing on Facebook and Twitter. So thank you for being on because I've been wanting to do this for two years. Two years. <laughs> thank plus, you for having me. Plus, and then I've been waiting for it, and we finally got it done. Woo-hoo. <laughs>